Amen. Lord, we thank you on today. Thank you for another day that you have allowed us and blessed us to see. And it's of your tender mercies that we are not consumed. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that has brought us to this place, to this point, to this very hour. And God, it is nothing that we take lightly or take for granted. But I ask as I stand before your people for these brief moments that you would word my mouth, Lord, that you would give me what to say, that you would give me how to say it. Lord, inspire someone, encourage someone, lift up some, bow down, head on this morning. Lord, you said that you are God that would supply our every need according to your riches and glory. We thank you right now that you're here to meet needs, that you're here to touch minds and heal bodies, that you're here, Lord, to inspire, encourage us on this morning. Lord, speak to someone through your word on this morning. Let someone leave you a different way than what they came, saying, surely I have been in the presence of God and we will be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise the glory the honor for it all in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen we're just grateful for God grateful to God for being here on this morning uh for every visit that's here brother Campbell glad to have you on this morning just all of the people of God amen grateful for another day God has blessed us and allowed us to see Amen. We're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord, as already been stated. Amen. I thoroughly enjoyed myself at the fish fry. Amen. With the brothers, we had some good food. Amen. Some good fellowship. Amen. And I heard you all had a wonderful time as well. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Just coming together. Amen. Even outside of the, amen, four walls of the church, just getting to know each other. But we thank the Lord for all that he's done. Amen. has been stated. Please continue to keep Brother Travis Murphy in prayer. Amen. As well as uh, his name is uh, Mr. Evaristo Gutierrez. Amen. You know, Brother Manny that comes and um, his sister, Sister Sandra, that was here. That is their brother. And he's um, currently hospitalized and not doing very well from what I understand. But we know that God is able. Amen. We know that God is able to do anything but fail. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of John? Amen. The eighth chapter. We're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord. John, the eighth chapter. Amen. That's a little song. It says, the Lord, I don't know if y'all know that, is blessing me. Do y'all know that one? Yeah. Right now. Oh, right now. Think about that. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. You know he woke me up this morning Hold on. and he started me on my way the Lord is blessing me oh right now oh right now you know he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way oh the Lord is blessing me right now oh right now amen amen sometimes people wonder say well what is the Lord doing there do I have a million dollars in the bank account you know but the fact that he woke you up this morning amen and then he started you on your way is a blessing in itself amen you were able to walk in this in this church under your own power you're in your right mind and that in itself is a blessing amen God has blessed you whether you realize it or not you may not have a brand new car, but you're alive and you're breathing. Amen. Amen. The Lord is blessing you right now. I want you to just reach over and witness to somebody. Tell them the Lord's blessing you right now. Witness and tell them. Say, the Lord is blessing you. In case that, yes, they're talking to you. The Lord is blessing you right now, right where you sit. The Lord is blessing you. Amen. Right now. Amen. John, the eighth chapter. Amen. Starting at the 31st verse. Amen.
John the 8th chapter, starting at the 31st verse, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, so it may read slightly differently than what some of you have. Amen. And when you're there, you can say amen. 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 Verse 31 says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. But we are the descendants of Abraham, they said, the people. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Yes, I realize that you are the descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father, but you are following the advice of your father. And they said, our father is Abraham. No, Jesus replied, for if you were really the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. So you are imitating your real father. And they replied, we aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It's because you can't even hear me, for you are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do the evil things that he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is the father of lies. So when I tell you the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God gladly, gladly to the, hears gladly to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. The people responded, you Samaritan devil. Didn't we say all along that you were possessed with a demon? And Jesus said, I have no demon in me. For I honor my father, you dishonor me. And though I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me. He is the true judge and I tell you the truth. Anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. And I just want to repeat one more time for emphasis. The first verse, verse 31 that we read, it said, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You all may be seated. In the presence of God, amen, and I just want to speak today briefly from the subject, the freedom in truth, amen, the freedom in truth, amen, and we just read the account, and I know that we are in the uh, Christmas season, yes sir, we are in the Christmas season, and, and we celebrate the birth and the coming of our Savior into this world, and, and oftentimes we get caught up in the fact that He came, and yes, he did, and he was a a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger, and all of those things, and we celebrate the birth of the Christ, but here's the thing, and I want to declare to you today, he did not stay a baby. Amen. He did not stay and remain in the manger, but that baby grew up, and the Bible said that he waxed 
uh, with wisdom and knowledge. And here's the thing. He came here on a, 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 on a mission. He had a, a purpose. And he walked in truth. As a matter of fact, he was truth. And he declared truth to everybody that he met. He didn't care if you had money, if you uh, were a per person of prestige or, or had power. He declared truth and he walked in truth. And everyone that encountered Jesus heard the truth. And you just read the account that he was telling the truth to this, these people. And they had an interesting response. He told them the truth. And their response was, you possessed with the devil. That, that was their response to the, they told the son of God, God in the flesh, that he was possessed with the demon. And, and that's an interesting response because here's the thing that I've learned. People say they want truth. That's what they say. People say they want truth. But, but in actuality, oftentimes, they really don't. I know that's what they say because I could ask you today, would you prefer that I tell you the truth or tell you a lie? And of course, everybody in here would say, tell me the truth. Let me hear the truth. I, 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 you know, nobody likes to be lied to. They say, keep it real with me. Ain't that what they say? Or they say nowadays, keep it 100. In other words, 100%. Keep it real with me. Tell me the truth. And people say they want the truth. Amen. But even in the, in the slightest matters, I've learned that, that truth sometimes is not what they really want to hear because uh, we are now in the holiday season. And, you know, one of the things that is common and, and that we look forward to during Thanksgiving is Christmas is good cooking. Amen. <laughs> and good eating. And I don't know about you, but everybody has traditions in their family. There are certain people who are responsible and we expect to prepare certain things. Amen. Daddy always does the turkey. Mama makes the dressing. Grandma makes the pies. And we come to expect that's the person they know and you know it's going to taste good and it's going to be right. When they make it. Amen. My daddy made some yeast rolls that were out of this world. And if you've ever had the experience of tasting them, you know I'm telling the truth. But since he's gone home to be with the Lord, we have all tried and attempted. And we've had our hand at trying to duplicate my daddy's yeast rolls. And I'm going to be honest with you. We have not had much success. None of us have gotten them to taste quite like him. And some of y'all have those traditions. You know who makes what. And, and yet inevitably sometimes the torch gets passed. Or some of us get brave and say, I'm hosting Thanksgiving this year. I'm going to make the dressing. <laughs> Don't bring anything. Are you sure I can make? No, I'm going to make the dressing this year. Y'all have had, had this experience. And everybody shows up and you make the dressing this year. And everybody starts eating and it's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. And you just look in and they take a couple of scoops and everybody just eating. And you wondering, ooh, I wonder if they like the dressing. But nobody says anything. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so finally you get up the nerve to ask The question lingering in your mind, how do y'all like the dressing? And somebody says, mm. <laughs> but you want to press the issue. I mean, just tell me, did I do it right? Did I put too much sage in it? Is it, you know, how do you like the dressing? Somebody says, well, you know. <laughs> and you say, just tell me the truth. So I said, all right, well, it's dry. <laughs> it don't taste like grandma's dressing. It don't taste like mama's dressing. You know, it's too salty or you didn't put enough. You know, and all of a sudden, yo, you say, you know what? I slaved all day in the kitchen trying to make this dressing. And this is my house. And y'all so ungrateful. You know what? You don't have to worry about me ever making the dressing again. Well, wait a minute. 
Did you say that you wanted to know the truth? And this is what happens because I have learned truth makes us uncomfortable. Because here's the thing about the truth. It makes us do something that we don't want to do. Self-examination. Because truth be told, we have no problem looking at everybody else and telling them what's wrong with them. You talk too much. You have a bad attitude. You know, I don't like the way you said that. You're not a very honest person. I mean, we can go down the list. I can ask you, tell me something you don't like about me. And I'm sure you say, well, where do I start? You know, we have no problem. But don't make me look at me. Please don't tell me about myself. Truth, truth makes us uncomfortable. And I found that when confronted with truth, people tend to do one of three things. They deflect it. And that means they say you got the shovel spirit. That means you shovel it out. Well, that was for them. Oh, I sure wish my, I hope my husband was listening today when the pastor said that, you know. Say it again, pastor. Y'all know how we do. Oh, you should have been at church today. The pastor was on your road, you know. They deflect the truth. Oh, they're, really, they're not really talking to me. No, that's not for me. I'm not like that. I'm not really like They deflect it. They reject it outright. Stop talking. I don't want to hear it. Please. You're making me mad. Or they do what we all should strive to do. They accept it. And the truth of the matter is, hear me. We must become, as believers, seekers of the truth. We ought to, he said, because you know what? This is the truth. This is the only thing that's going to set you free. Amen. Some of us are walking around today messed up because we refuse to hear the truth. But we ought to be seekers of truth so much so that you ought to surround yourself with people, hear me, that tell you not what you want to hear. Amen. But what you need to hear. That, that's one thing about me. I've never liked to have yes men and yes, yes women around me. Surround yourself with people that will tell you the truth about you. Amen. Amen. And I know, see, here's the thing. Don't call yourself my friend. Don't call yourself my friend. And you see me going a wrong way. About to make a mistake. About to fall over the edge of the cliff cliff about to fall flat on my face and you say nothing and then when it happens you say well listen I knew that was going to happen I knew he was no good I knew she was crazy I knew that wasn't a good investment I knew that was a bad company I knew that car lot sold bad cars but I didn't want to say anything to you because I didn't want to hurt your feelings let me tell you something hurt my feelings I would rather have my feelings hurt than to go through 15 years of heartache and headache. I'd rather have my feelings hurt than to end up in debt. I'd rather have my feelings hurt than to have to hire an attorney. Amen. Please hurt my feelings. And you know, and I know people say, well, yeah, you, you say that. I, I had someone and a member of this church, and they're here today. And I'm not going to say their name. And they told me one time, they said, Pastor, you anointed. And they said, Pastor, I, I enjoy your messages and all of that. And they said, but I'm going to tell you something. They said, if you ever get off, if you ever start preaching some foolishness, they said, I'm going to tell you. And now some people would hear that and say, now wait a minute. I'm the man of God. I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. How are you going to tell me? How, you know, do you not know that your soul is too valuable for that? There are many, if you look at these celebrities that have passed away, the one thing that they all had in common, they had people around them that knew, you know what, they're doing way too many drugs. they drinking way too much alcohol. But nobody wanted to tell them the truth. Hey, man, you've changed. Why? Because they were the ones writing the check. Whitney Houston, uh, Michael Jackson, Prince, you can go down the list. Nobody wanted to say, hey, man, you got a problem. 
But this person said, you know what, I'm going to tell you, because here's the fact of the matter. A lot of preachers don't want to hear that, but this is the one place that you're supposed to be able to come. This is the one place that you're supposed to be able to come and hear the truth. You can go out in the world and people will tell you, baby, you find nothing wrong with you. Do you do your truth as you live the way you want to? You only live once. Or, hey, don't worry about that. Be your authentic self. Uh, you can pay some money and go to the movie theater and Hollywood will sit there and, and sell you make-believe and fantasy for an hour and a half to two hours. Amen. There are books that you can read that are filled with fairy tales and fantasy. But the house of God. The house of God is the place that you are supposed to be able to come. And hear the truth. And it's my responsibility to tell you. I know you may not like me afterwards. Amen. But it is incumbent upon me to tell you the truth. I had a woman come to this church. And she sat in the back and after service she came up and said, Pastor, and this is the truth. Because I take it for granted that everyone believed in preaching truth. She said, I've been in church my whole life, over 30 something years. She shook my hand and she said, you're the first pastor that I ever heard preach against adultery. And she was happy about that. She said, you are the first pastor I ever heard in my life. Hey, this is crazy. Been in church my whole life. And you're the first pastor I ever heard preach against adultery. Y'all know I talk about fornication. Hey, listen. I tell the truth and it get quiet just like it is now. I always know. I always know when I hit a nerve because it gets quiet. But it's not going to stop me. Because I have to stand before God one day and give an account. Because people want to be a preacher and minister. But you've got to give an account to what goes across this pulpit. And I said, you mean to tell me? She said, I've never heard a preacher preach that. And I've learned something. God, God, God had to help me with some things. He, because I used to feel like it was my responsibility to get everybody saved. It was my responsibility to make sure they live saved. It was my responsibility to make sure they came. To, and the Lord had to show me, your job is one thing and one thing only. Tell them the truth. Now what they do with it is on them. But it's off of me once you've heard the truth. And, and here's the thing, I'm not crazy. That woman was glad to hear the truth. But that ain't always a case because by the same token, we had a young man come sit right on this side. And some of y'all were here that Sunday. And I was preaching something one Sunday and I watched. He got up and he walked out that door. He pushed the door open, walked out. And you know that door didn't always close, so it was just hanging open. And I said, well, maybe he had an emergency. I said, I sure hope, you know, I hope everything was all right. So I kept preaching. And he came back in, and you remember, sat in his seat, and he looked mad. The rest of the service. So like I do after service, I was going around, hey, how you doing? Thank you for coming, and they were coming up to me. And I started talking to this young man. He said, I don't like what you said today. I, I don't like what you said. You were saying this and saying that. And I, I, don't. I said, well, first, brother, hold on. I don't know you, first of all. And what I said was not of me. What happened was the truth. Uh, see, the truth don't feel good. Y'all know that. Have you ever been in service and somebody says something and you start squirming in your seat? Huh? Be honest. Have you ever been in service and the message went forth that you felt like, I got to go to the restroom real quick. Let me, come on, y'all don't want to tell the truth. And be honest, I've, I've been, have you ever been there and heard a message and said, I wish the preacher would stop talking. I wish he would get off of this subject. Have you ever been and your stomach just start churning and you don't know what, you, you say, I'm ready to run out of here. Well, that's what the truth will do to you. 
it makes people uncomfortable and that's a good thing because here's the thing they say if you if you throw a frog in a in a, in a hot pot of water it'll hop out of there if it gets hot enough maybe it'll make you want to come out of your sin If it makes you uncomfortable enough to hear that fornication will send you to hell, well then guess what? Maybe you stop sleeping around. This is the truth. But the truth makes people uncomfortable. And this young man said, you know what? I don't like what it is that you said. But you know what? The truth may not always tickle your fancy. Amen. They used to say medicine don't always taste good. Castorol was nasty. Huh? Oh my God, that stuff was disgusting. Still is. <laughs> Mix it with honey and all of that, but it was still disgusting. But it was good for you. And medicine may not always taste good. They mix my kids every time I go to the pharmacy. They say, well, do you want it to taste like bubble gum for them? Or do you want it to taste like grape? Or do you want it to taste like cherries? And that baby of mine, oh, she loves the flavoring so much, she's ready. I'm ready to take my medicine. She loves it. But we didn't have that luxury. But here's the thing. It may not taste good. It may not feel good. But God knows it's good for you. He said, you will know the truth. And here's the thing about the truth. He said, and it will make you free. It'll set you free. I'm talking, this is what Jesus came to do. See, I know we say, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus, he didn't stay that way. Silent night. See, we're getting ready to come up on Christmas. See, holy night. All is calm. All is bright. Round young virgin mother. He didn't stay that way. He said, I came to tell you all the truth. I came to turn the world system upside down. This is what he said. I came to set father against son, mother against daughter. He came with a sword of truth in his hand. And he came cutting. And they said, wait a minute. This wasn't what we was expecting. The Messiah has come. He said, I've come to set at war with the devil and his kingdom. He's a liar. And I've got the truth. The lion of Judah. That's what he was. He was truth. But he said it didn't feel good. Here's the thing. If you accept it, he said, but the truth will make you free. The Bible tells the account of a Samaritan woman who was at the well one day. Hear me. I'm almost done. The Bible said that she was having a conversation with Jesus. Talking. Give me some water. Are you from around here? I'm paraphrasing. You from around here? Oh, yeah. And Jesus said, hey. Go get your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. Here came the truth. He said, because you've been with five different men. Juan, Julio, Tyrone, <laughs> Willie, James, John, six. Five different men. And he said, and guess what? The one you with right now, he ain't your husband either. Oh, now wait a minute. And she said, you must be a prophet. How did you, how did you know that? That I've been with five different men and I'm living with one now that ain't my husband. Now hold on. In that moment, she had a choice. Some of y'all would say, okay, who been gossiping about me? Huh? <laughs> who told you? My track record. Huh? People, what they say about me? I'm promiscuous, huh? Who said it? I'm going to go confront them, running my name down. She had a choice. Truth came, and truth comes to you every day, coming to you right now. Every Sunday, truth came. She had a choice. 
But the truth will make you free. Because here was the freedom in that. Jesus revealed something to her. You've been with five, six different men. And none of those have been your husband. And revelation came. because here, No wonder none of us got alone. No wonder we've been fighting so much. No wonder none of those were not them on my husband. And that one I'm living with now. He's not mine either. And she was set free. How do we know that she was free? Because the Bible does not say that she turned around and went back into that situation with that man. But the Bible says instead she ran into the village and told everybody, hey, come see a man that told me everything that I ever did.